Hey, it's Tim. I'm here without Guy, but I'm pretty excited on, on uh, a day of a commercial break to be bringing with you Andy Hilfiger, music and fashion icon, brand celebrity maker, and, and uh, all-around cool guy, and a guy that I'd love just to talk music with, uh, in addition to the world of fashion, the world of apparel. Andy, welcome to Commercial Break, and, and uh, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. We're not lost on topics to talk about, because when, when I learned a little bit more about your music background and, and, and heard that you, you'd put in a, a cameo as, as a member of the Ramones, or at least hung out with the Ramones, hung out with Blue Oyster Cult, hung out with Twisted Sister, um, all the while, though, being a, a brand creator and part of an iconic fashion family, um, I said, we got to have a conversation. So um, let, let's quickly talk about uh, the world of rock and roll fashion. Um, because, uh, you know, you, you've, whether it's Steven Tyler, or whether it's other rock luminaries, whether it's Marky Ramone and leather jackets that anyone who's from any part of the world wants to look like they're from the Lower East Side of Manhattan in the early 80s when, when punk was uh, probably actually almost dead again. But, um, but talk, yeah. about, talk about rock and roll fashion. And, and you know, where, where is that today? Musicians always want to look good on stage and the, um, the audience always likes to uh, wear what their idols are wearing. They sure do. Being a musician, I've always, uh, we used to look at the album covers wondering like, yeah. where could we get this stuff with my brother Tommy Hilfiger and Billy Hilfiger. And uh, we've come- I'm taking off my Tommy Hilfiger tie, by the way, right now, oh, so yeah. I can unveil a music t-shirt too. I'm listening. Back in the um, 70s, really, we used to check out the album covers. We'd come to New York City and we'd go see the Ramones play at CBGB. And then we'd go try to find the stuff they were wearing, the, you know, the, the studded belts in the uh, black leather jackets and then bring them upstate. And uh, that's how Tommy started his company, uh, coming to New York and buying all the cool stuff. Oh no, you have it on. I I'm a bit of a fashion uh, you know, creator myself and this one's been customized sleeveless. Of there course. you go. Um, you never, I mean, you have to do something to give it some edge, so, you know. So Tommy came to New York City in uh, 1980. Right. And uh, was freelancing and trying to uh, find his spot in the fashion business. And Billy and I came, guitar and bass, respectively. And um, we, we would play at the nightclubs, and Tommy would dress us in the cool clothing. Right on. From Crash and Vaudeville and all, all the cool stuff. Well, eventually, we started a band with uh, Marky Ramone and Richie Stotts from the Plasmatics called King Flux. What was Wendy O. Williams like? Wendy was crazy. I mean, she would blow up, you know, cars on stage and TVs. Right after the Plasmatics, Richie went solo with Marky Ramone and Billy and I. So I never played with Wendy or toured with Wendy, but we toured with the Ramones. Yeah. We did 10 shows with the Ramones and it was unbelievable because I love the Ramones from, you know, the beginning. Bands like the Pistols and the Clash and, and the punk movement was, you know, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of godfathers of it, but the Ramones have to be, uh, and are universally considered one of them. America's number one punk band, the Ramones. Yeah, you know, I was from the mean streets of Scottsdale. Um, so I was a very angry, uh, underprivileged child. I found myself <laughs> stuffing a safety pin through my ear and getting to the Ritz to do some stage diving. I'm guessing this is 81. Yeah. yeah, I opened for the Ramones at the Ritz with King Flux. And then Mar nice. Marky joined back with the Ramones. And my brother Billy and I started a group called, well, with two founders of Blue Oyster Cult, Joe and Albert Bouchard. And we were the Cult brothers. Nice. So it went from the Ramones to Blue Oyster Cult. And then um, 1990, I saw Grand Prix on TV and the uh, car had a Tommy logo on it. So I yeah. called Tommy and I'm yeah. like, I didn't know you were sponsoring uh, Formula One. You know, <laughs> national. he goes, yeah, do you want to give out like hats and t-shirts and make the uniforms? <laughs> like, sure. So that was my first job in the corporate world of fashion. And I took those samples and I started addressing a lot of the hip-hop groups in kids and they started rapping about Tommy and uh, the company went from 100 million to 500 million within a couple years so let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, about Kanye and 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 Yeezy Kanye's a very talented guy um, his music 
He's got great taste. I just don't know what's happening with the, it seems like there's some craziness going on. But I got to tell you, I met with Kanye about five years ago. Yeah. He came to the office and we were talking about doing a denim line together. And I said, oh, we should do a f affordable denim. He said, no, 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 I want to go high end. I said, well, I, I, I'm more in the middle thing, but you know, good luck with the high end. Right. You know, you're going to be competing against Vuitton and Chanel and these people. And that's wasn't what I was doing. I was doing more of, you know, TJ Maxx, Burlington, yeah. uh, Price, but also your Macy's. And uh, he was right because three months later, he came out with $700 sneakers or yep. more. and created a billion dollar brand out of this stuff that's arguably a three billion dollar company he said my fans or you know my my consumer will follow me where i go and he's right he's yeah right. so i hope everything works out for him because you know i'd hate to you know it seems a little craziness what happened in the last day or two i was kind of happy for him with the whole gap thing but i don't know how that's going to pan out now yeah, I mean, for, for folks that don't know, I mean, today, basically, uh, Kanye basically said to, to both The Gap and to Adidas, um, you know, the, the Gap deal is very important, I'd say, for, for both The Gap and for Kanye. Um, but the deal with Adidas, um, again, Adidas makes his sneakers. It's a $3 billion company. They did a billion three in sales last year. And, and Kanye's, you know, basically saying, I need a board seat. Put me on the board. Um, and, and what was, a, you know, yeah, a bit of an incoherent rant. Um, but but I hear you. There's no questioning. He is a tastemaker. He has a following. I yeah. mean, his following is is fashion forward. Um, I wish him the best, but uh, it's, it's not e it's not easy out there. Are you looking at the stock market on a day in and day out basis, or once in a while? I mean, do you, do you no, care I, about stocks? I, I definitely watch the stock market. Uh, yeah. My wife really does a lot. You yeah. know the. Amazon, like, it's crazy. Well, um, but I, I do watch the stock market, and it's been, uh, it's been surprisingly doing well considering what's going on. But with the COVID and the riots and the whole thing, I thought the stock market would take a bigger dive than it has. That's the, kind of the, the, the dichotomy and the chasm that's been created is the word the guy always uses. But you know, on our show, what we've been talking about for the last six to eight weeks or so is it's not just that the markets, uh, there has been this V-shaped recovery and, and that whether, whether the economy has recovered in that capacity is one thing, but the markets uh, indisputably have. Uh, Amazon's uh, far and away at all-time highs. Walmart's at all-time highs. They're the largest, uh, arguably, Tesla. you know, consumer. Right, exactly. Well, Tesla. The, so the, the Tesla story, or uh, DraftKings, or Peloton, or Nikola, Peloton. which is, you know, some people believe the next Tesla based upon hydrogen fuel technology. These stocks are 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 trading with momentum behind them that we really haven't seen since the dot com days. And, and your observations that it doesn't really make sense to you um, is, is not only totally fair, but that's, that's where we hear a lot of anxiety from investors. Yeah, I walked through New York City because I've been going into the office in uh, a couple of days here and there. Where, where's your office? It's in the Garment Center on 37th and 7th. Yep. And uh, it's like a ghost town. Yeah. And there's buildings boarded up and it, it's crazy. And then you go and turn on the market and it's like happening. So I don't know. Well, this is, you know, that, that I don't know is, is exactly where I think some of the, the smartest minds in the market, and I'm certainly not putting myself in that camp. We, we do our show every day. We try to make you know, sense out of, of things that a lot of people spend uh, their lives trying to figure out. And we make a lot of mistakes, but, but the, the bottom line here is the amount of money that's come into the market from the government between stimulus and, and stimulus checks and yeah. then and then and rates are at zero i mean it's a great time to be if you can if you can get credit it's a great time to to be building a business because money is free 